Hi, my name is Yaroslav. Thanks for watching. If you found this particular screencast on the internet and you're not aware of my blog, uh, be sure to visit sharematch.com and click on screencasts here uh, to see other videos which are, which are potentially related to what you're working on. Also, if you're working on branding um, and found this particular screencast useful, be sure to check out my uh, new book titled uh, SharePoint 2010 Branding and Practice, uh, where there's plenty of scenarios like the one that we're talking about here. Today we're going to talk about uh, incorporating uh, Telerik controls or any third-party controls for that matter in your SharePoint site. So uh, and here I'm at uh, Telerik.com website. I'm going to click on ASP.NET Ajax controls and uh, I'm going to uh, take a look at the tree view control that Telerik has to offer. And this particular tree view control allows you to display the data bound to the, uh, to the control in the form of a tree. So here are a couple of examples that Teller gives us uh, how the data is going to be, um, how data is going to be represented or can be represented once it's, once it's bound to the tree. Um, so assuming that I like that particular uh, design here, I would like to incorporate it in my SharePoint side. Let's take a look at what's involved. Um, in this process. So I'm going to download the trial version of the uh, of the Telerik controls. If you have full license uh, you will you would download your full license. I'm just going to take the trial here and I'm going to download just DLLs and scripts. I'm not going to download the whole uh, installation. It's uh, much larger. So um, in here I'm already signed in. Uh, I've already downloaded those controls but this is basically what you need to uh, do to download them. What I'm going to do here now, I'm going to switch to my virtual machine and go to Contosa.com, which is the site that we're going to be using for testing. Um, and I'm going to replace this particular top navigation menu uh, with my controls. So uh, if you notice, when I add a new site to, the, to my hierarchy, uh, such as I'm going to call this one another site, click Create. And uh, this, when the site's added, and if I go back to my uh, root site, you'll see that uh, the navigation now includes dynamically the new site name. So I want to replace that with a custom Telerik control. So I'm, I already extracted the package here with the Telerik DLLs. I'm going to open the DLLs and drop them into a global assembly cache. Uh, so that's C colon slash Windows assembly. I'm just going to drag and drop those controls uh, to my assembly. And every time you drop something into assembly, uh, you need to um, reset your uh, IIS in order for new assemblies to be to be cached and available. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit IIS reset command and let my, let my server pick up new assemblies or cache new assemblies. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to my site and uh, I'm going to use uh, SharePoint Designer to actually add the site master page and add those custom menus to my site. Uh, sorry, add this new custom menu of uh, Telerik uh, to my site to replace the existing menu. So uh, I'm going to launch SharePoint Designer here and uh, from within SharePoint Designer I'm going to open the Contosa.com and um, I'm going to access the master page once the site's opened. There it is. So it's inside catalogs, uh, master pages, and here's my v4 master that's used by default by the site. I'm going to add that master page and uh, add a couple of references here. So first reference that I'm going to I'm going to uh, put on on, the, on this particular master page. I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and I'm going to add the reference to the actual teller control which I have in my clipboard here. So I'm going to so it's a register reference with a Telerik uh, prefix and then the namespace uh, is actually uh, the namespace and the assembly value you can grab from your uh, from the assembly that we've dropped earlier. So if I go to back to the, my assembly folder and take a look at the properties of my uh, web part, sorry, of my uh, Telerik DLL, uh, here's the namespace, here's the public key token that's also used inside the assembly value here, and as well as the version, make sure you have the latest version because uh, you know you may download the latest version in a trial and uh, the reference might be still old to so make sure the version is up to date. So that's one item that uh, I'm gonna include here. Another item that I'm gonna now reference is the actual menu. So I'm gonna click here uh, in my preview pane to be thrown right away to the right place here. And I'm gonna place a new Telerik menu right underneath it. So I'm gonna again paste it in and it's just gonna reference the Telerik rad panel bar 
and I'm going to give it any ID and bind it to the actual data source that represents the top navigation menu. So this top site map is uh, the data source uh, defined uh, earlier in the master page and it contains the data of the uh, you know representing the particular top site menu so I'm gonna it's exactly the same value that is here on an out-of-the-box menu so I'm just gonna use that I'm gonna save my page and right away the menu is rendered as expected so now that I know that uh, it's 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 rendered I can get rid of the old menu I can hide it so one thing that the reason why it worked right away out of the box is because I have uh, I have the uh, the reference uh, to this Telerik uh, DLL in uh, registered as my safe assembly. So when you add a new assembly to a global assembly cache, um, by default it's not registered as safe. So here's what's involved to make sure that it that is registered as safe. Uh, you're gonna go to your uh, to your to the root side of your uh, of your assembly. Um, sorry, to the root side of your website. Uh, and in this case, since we're in SharePoint uh, and in, in this particular site, we're going to open the web config and locate the part of the uh, site here called uh, or part of the uh, the configuration called uh, safe controls. So safe controls registrations are right here. If you notice that there's quite a few of them, the one that's added here for Telerik is this value. And basically, the easiest way to to create one uh, for for any control is to make a copy of the existing one, and uh, the one on the top that I particularly uh, took a copy of, and change the values of your of your assembly. So those are the same values that you. Uh, that we talked about earlier, uh, so public key token, version, namespace, assembly name, and etc. So if you copy the one of the existing ones, uh, rename the values, save the file, you should be good to go. So um, now, once I once I remove my you know old menu, uh, replace it with a new menu. Here I have the new menu on the site, and. Uh, and and that's basically all that that is to it. So of course there's uh, there's other places where I can where I may want to uh, use the uh, the menu or or other controls custom controls uh, such as left navigation. Um, I can also access some of the available properties here and um, and uh, set those those properties or bind to some of the uh, events here. As we can see, there's uh, on click on init on load, so I can bind to all of those and, and uh, uh, make uh, or customize uh, um, the menu behavior or look and feel to match my particular requirements. And uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, here is the left side menu. Again, the same kind of analogy. I can bind the to the, I can drop my custom Telerik control, uh, or sorry, not custom, but just out of the box Telerik control instead of this menu, uh, bind to its data source. And, uh, and customize it to match my particular look and feel. And, and there I go. So this, that's pretty much all that's involved uh, in, uh, in using Telerik or other third-party controls in your, in your SharePoint application.